Hello there! What's going on everyone? Today we're coming to you with the X-34 Land Speeder Unit Expansion for Star Wars Legion. We got this at Star Wars Celebration and we're going to take a look at it. While we're looking at the box, I do want to remind you guys there is a new round of the giveaway going on right now. So you can enter to win a $25 Amazon gift card used to purchase an expansion of your choice or put towards maybe a new Legion core set or anything you want. All you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. It's as simple as that. All right, so we've got, uh, I'm gonna box this thing open, open it up there with the exact up. All right, so here it is, and now let's open this box and take a look at all of this goodness inside. Very exciting, let's see, do I have it upside down? There we go, that's the, oh, so this one has a nice little tray. This is our second heavy uh, for the Rebels, which is really cool because the heavies are uh, really have only been the Snowspeeder and you know the uh, the ATST, and so now we've got this in the tank coming out. This is a large base for the Rebels, so you know same size as your your Snowspeeder, and we've got the the actual base uh, vehicle right here. And the cool thing about this is there's so many different ways. Like, there's so many points of customization on this thing. Look at this. You can put stuff right in there. You can put stuff in here and there. You can put stuff all over the place. You can put things right there. Put things right there. And then there's our base. So, really nice. All right. Now, we've got a lot of pieces here. Let's see if we can dry fit some of this together well actually before I try and do that let's look at the instructions and see what the instructions say because we got a lot of bags of pieces all right so here is our x-34 land speeder instruction guide we've got a rocket gunner we've got a rifle gunner we've got the uh, ion blaster the medium blaster we've got our driver there we've got the interior consoles we've got the weapon mounting plate land speeder grill Oh, yeah, especially if you want to chrome those out, you might want to do that before you put those on. Oh, that's really cool. We've got the windshield, the engine cover as well. There's a lot of stuff. I don't know. I don't think I want to build this out completely right here because, uh, well, you know, it's, it's like you've got to figure out how you want it built, right? So do you magnetize stuff so you can try it different ways? Really cool. So, like, pretty good assembly instructions here. This is one of the more detailed minis as far as pieces. That we've got here. Wow. Very cool. Very cool. And is there new rules? Oh, yes. Yes. Disembark, embark, arsenal three, transported. Very cool. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, here's our. Okay, so this is our base and our windshield. So this is the first clear plastic um, actual part of a mini that we've gotten so far. And our base is actually pretty small as well. Here's the the base part, so I'm pretty sure. And I'm not going to lock this in all the way yet, but that's because uh, we don't definitely don't want to attach that. But that looks gorgeous! What's this on there? Oh man, super cool. All right. Very cool. I don't want that locked in just yet. Here's our, our chrome plating and our engine covers. Wow. Let's see how well does this go in here. Just like that. Just like that. Oh yeah, this one will be really fun. Really fun to do. Wow. All right. Um... So which one is this guy? This guy's sitting. Let's see which guy we got out already. Put these two guns in. It's not that guy. It's not that guy. This might be the driver. Yeah, his legs are straight down. So the legs are straight down. That's the driver. And he's just got the extra gun. So he's going to go in here. Oh, yeah. And he just sits in there. So you can... You can't really dry fit this together. That's, when, that's for sure. Because he'll just sit in there. So he won't stay very steady. So there's going to be limits how much I can uh, really do with them. There we go. This is uh, arm. All right. 
we'll do a little bit a little bit of dry fitting uh, if, if we can manage there we go well this is one of the more detailed pieces to assemble there we go and it's funny I got a little bit of like, scraping on the on the seat there of course it'll be it'll be eventually be painted so Wow, cool. We got some of our guns. Where does this one go? Oh, look, it kind of it can go right there. And you know, you could even like put extra holes in there and just put all the guns in. Run it without a window. Put both of the guns in the window. Like that, that would be pretty cool. Just just take the, the clear dash off and just put guns all over it. <laughs> you can do a lot. With that, let's see what else we got. This is for one of the other minis. All right, let me move this aside. Look at some of our other gunners. You know what else is cool? Since they're in like such a cool sitting position, you could put them on other things too. Like you could, if you wanted to cut, like kit out your, like an ATRT, you could put like your gunners sitting on the ATRT or have them like riding on somebody else's shoulders. That would be also really cool. Um, Okay, you can go this way, right? I don't want to go in there. Oh, it was hard to go in. All right, that's one of the sitting positions. Oh, and this is our... Um... Oh, look at the... Okay. The Leku back there were sculpted in. I didn't even realize it. I love when they give us more alien sculpts. Very... Oh, we got the bazooka right there. And so this is a good, this is a full piece right here. We just have to get this arm in. These are not always the easiest things to put together, especially while the camera's rolling. And they don't dry fit super well. All right, that's about as best as I can get right now, because I think it's going to really want to be glued. But looks good. Keep <laughs> Pieces keep falling off. All right, and let's see, this is our other one. And then we'll take a look at some of the cards, because I think you guys probably want to see the cards. All right, so we're putting, putting the legs together, and this is another cool, like, crouching, sitting position. Oh, goodness. Let's see, you're like that. Oh, so you're going in, you're sitting on your leg. Like that. Wow. What a cool, what, like the sculpts here are really, really impressive. There he goes, sitting like that. And of course this, you know, I did just look in the rule book and we got our, this is a Rodian head. And of course you can always swap out the heads real easy. It's a good looking Rodian head. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at the expression on his face, dude. Like the face is really expressive. Like like that's that's awesome. Oh, and then I try to put the other pieces on and it's falling off, so there's the Oh, he's aiming down sights. Alright, the arms don't want to go in too easily, so I don't think he's yeah, and then he's falling apart now. All right, let's go ahead and look at the cards while we're uh, trying to put the pieces, uh, you know, find them all before they all fall. All right, so for cardboard, we have our standard tokens, aim, dodge, damage, ion, our, da our, our, our resilience tokens there, and of course our heavy, and there's the back side. So uh, this is what, SWL36. Um, I don't ever keep the proofs of purchase anymore, but we have our unit card here, and so we've got... You know, we've got our pilot, we've got some of our uh, crew, hard point, our, our, our uh, comms. Uh, it, we do have an innate weapon. It's two dice at range one to two. Only 75 points for the heavy. So if you want to run this uh, like naked, you'll still, you know, it won't be that expensive. Like for a heavy, as far as a heavy is concerned, this is actually pretty cheap. Granted, there's a whole lot of really attractive upgrade options. So you'll want to run this uh, with some upgrades almost certainly. However... You don't necessarily have to. You know, if you're looking to save points and you do want to have something that's hard to kill that can also transport maybe a slower unit, then I think that might be a good, uh, you know, this might be a good option.
Uh, we do have, you know, speed two. Uh, and then we've got two white dice that only range one to two, so not very good. But uh, we do have both surges, which is nice. Only a white defense die. Uh, six health and uh, four resilience. Now, on the speeder uh, upgrades, uh, we have, uh, or sorry, as far as its keywords, we've got armor two. So, granted, we're not going to be able to defend that well against really big attacks, but against small arms fire, against small shots, we'll be able to cancel two hits right away. That's really nice. Plus, cover. Uh, so, you know, it's almost like armor three, right? Like, we, you know, with worth our cover one and armor. Um, so that's really going to help it stay alive. Uh, it's got arsenal three, so it can fire up to three weapons. So you are kind of paying for that keyword in the base cost, which will kind of go to waste if you don't at least give it one uh, ability. Um, light transport open, so you can transport a friendly trooper unit that consists exactly of one small base mini after defending you suffered one or more wounds each unit you are transporting suffers a wound typical transport now this one um you know I, I think maybe putting luke into the battle pretty early is one option he's already pretty fast but this is you know another thing that you can do uh and if they ever come out with any really slow like speed one rebel rebel units i think that'll be a really great option like if they ever do like old ben kenobi i think is transporting him he you could i could see him being a little bit slower and i could see this being a really great option for him. And it'd be thematic since he did take a ride in it in episode four. Uh, and then it's got speeder one, so you have to do, uh, you get to move over speed one and you get to do the compulsory move, which is actually really useful uh, since you don't necessarily always have to aim and, you know, move and shoot. Now you can like get your compulsory move, then aim and shoot. So it's almost like three, three, ac uh, three actions you get in a turn. So let's take a look at our upgrades. First thing we get is Rider Azadi. Rider Azadi is uh, he's a pilot for uh, rebel only or repulsor vehicle only. So that means basically right now you can put him in the X-34 or the snow speeder. Um, and he says, while performing a move, increase or decrease your maximum speed by one. And that's really going to be super, super helpful when you are doing the uh, compulsory moves. Now, that means the th third land speeder can go one, two or three. Of course, you have to exhaust him to do that, but that also can slow down your snow speeder so it doesn't, it's not forced to do the three speed move. Uh, he seems like he's most useful on the X-34 since he gives you three choices instead of only two choices on the snow speeder because you can't go up to speed four. Uh, but he's also pretty cheap. So, you know, five points for an exhaust isn't too bad, especially if it's going to save you a whole bunch of damage. Um, now we have the Outer Rim Speed Jockey. We get actually two copies of this one, so that's pretty nice. And the Outer Rim Speed Jockey uh, is also a repulsor vehicle only, is an alternate pilot for the X-34 or the Snow Speeder. And they give you two copies so you don't have to go and buy a whole second one because he's not unique. This one you can run multiples of, which is really good. And since you can only have two heavies in any one list, two is really the most you're likely to need unless, of course, you're playing uh, a Grand Army. So um, you gain cover one while, you know, and, and so that's in because it's one, it's going to stack. So that will actually absolutely stack here and give you cover two, uh, which is really useful, especially with the armor two, because now you're canceling up to four hits. So if you put him in here, you're really going to be hard to hit. It's almost like you have full-blown armor, the unrestricted type of armor, instead of canceling only two with armor. Now, as far as some of our crew, we've got the A300 rifle gunner. Only nine points, and you're going to get a second attack that rolls two dice. Very similar to your basic DH-17 uh, blaster pistol. However, this one's range one to three instead of one to two, like on the base unit. So, you know, and, and if you're looking to get that three shooting weapons so you can take advantage of Arsenal three, this is a cheap option. Now, a far more expensive option here is the RP six, uh, RPS-6 rocket gunner, which is going to be 36 points. Way more expensive, but you're getting good dice and you're getting great range. And impact two. So this one is two to four, uh, and, and three dice, red, black, and white, and impact two. So good for uh, going after those uh, ATSTs or other rebel units, and like uh, against another X-34 land speeder. Now it is important to know that since this is a first, uh, you know, first unit that has impact in this uh, thing, we're, we want, I do want to just point out that cover will cancel dice before impact can upgrade them to crit, uh, you know, for, before armor comes in and takes a look at the remaining pool. So cover is important on a vehicle, even when it has armor, because if you had only maybe two hits and you were looking at upgrading those two with impact two, if the other person had cover two, that would cancel them and you would not get to turn those into crits. So there you go. But this is a much more expensive weapon. Um, but what's really good about both of these 
is that they're omnidirectional. Like these are the dudes sitting, you know, on the uh, on, on this on the land speeder that can just turn around and shoot any direction. And typically, on vehicles, we're we're seeing, you know, a lot of vehicles that have a fixed front weapon or you know a, a specific you know can only shoot out of a specific angle. So the fact that they're omnidirectional is also one of the things that helps the uh, the cost there, or you know what you're paying for. All right, here we go. A Mark II medium blaster. This one is fixed front. This is going to be the one that you mount on the front of the vehicle. Um, it must be inside your front arc, and it's a 34 point, uh, a 34 point upgrade. Range one to three, four black dice. It's not bad, but and and and, and you know, four black dice for 34. Well, you can keep in mind you'll probably almost always be able to shoot this because you do have arsenal three, so it's not like you're going to have to make that much of a choice. Uh, so this one is nice. Um, I think this one might be the go-to uh, because it's the cheaper of the two. The other one is going to be the uh, M45 Ion Blaster. Uh, this one is, you know, has its pros and cons. I don't like it as much um, because it's got, uh, it's more expensive, first off. It's 38 points. Uh, it also is, a, it's an exhaust. So, you you know, you have to recover if you want to, like, try and ready it again. Now, that's probably more doable if you've got somebody like Ryder Azadi, or even if you put Wedge on here and you're doing like the full 360, which maybe you will do since you have a fixed front weapon. But you're also rolling white dice instead of black. Now, you do get more dice total. That makes sense. But uh, with the Impact and Ion, they work better to disable vehicles, uh, but but you're, just, you're getting less damage. And, and maybe that's fine, especially if you're doing Arsenal 3 and you're going to split up your shots and you're going to... You're going to fire a couple of different weapons and split some of them up. Uh, maybe this is the only one you go towards an ATST to, to slow it down. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm not really, uh, I'm not, not sure how crazy I am about, about Ion. Uh, it hasn't proved to be that useful. Um, but maybe now it will be because at the same time as I would say Ion's not that good, we did just get two new vehicles. So maybe we'll start to see a little more vehicle play. So the M45 Ion Blaster right there. And we do get a copy of HQ Uplink. Uh, which is a useful uh, useful upgrade. I don't know how useful it'll be here, especially if you're transporting your commander. You won't really need to uh, to activate it, but it is what it is. Um, it's another copy of HQ Uplink. And uh, that's, uh, I think that's everything. All right, everybody. So that is the X-34 Landspeeder unit expansion. Let me know what you think in the description below. And don't forget to enter that giveaway and uh, keep playing some more Legion. All right. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.